<clears throat> All right, welcome to another episode of Every Ten Day, where a dad plays D and D with his kids. Hello, hello. Uh, it's episode one hundred, people. People, one hundred. Happening. We, we rejoin the action straight away. Straight away, as we. Some of you stagger, Elowin, in your case, uh, helped by your friends. Um, you walk across an open patch of wild grassland, the 60, 80 feet back towards the gnomish whelk spelljammer ship, severely dilapidated from its recent crash. <laughs> and you walk back across this beautiful, rich, wild grassland away from a small underground coven um, and uh, guardianship space held by three spirit naga, guardians of the enchanted forest. This at the very edges of the borders of LNF. You've just defeated Scafex, the evil spirit, this evil hellish spirit that inhabited your your other blade and now bladeless um. but free of the strong-willed <laughs> evil sword you are bid welcome into the sprawling forest kingdom of Elenef by the spirit guardians of the Naga and as you stagger across in your case being helped along still Areas of your non-magical clothing smoldering from the, the fire that has uh, ravaged you. Um, you are taken back towards the gnomish vessel, much like a whelk shell turned upside down with a, like a building put where you would imagine the creature would be put on a smaller scale. Broken mast, dented front, large areas of the ceramic hull fallen away. Uh, but still it hovers just a few feet above the surface of the river that rushes by underneath it. Roughly 40, 50 foot wide river. Shallow but fast through the rich verdant colours of, of this dense forest. <clears throat> As you walk back to um, from a victorious battle, actually quite a fast one, you were able to quickly put pay to the Pit Fiend's machinations here in the Prime oh, Material oh, Plane. Oh. It was in the Prime Material Plane for about 24 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we smote him. We smote him. You smote it against the earth. We smited it. Smated. Get smitten. <laughs> <laughs> um, you walk back. Uh, up on the deck, out comes your small... Roughly three foot, just under three foot tall, gnomish friend, Zanlin. Hey there, Zanlin. Come aboard, I have treats for you. Treats? Yes, if you've been fighting, I have treats. Okay. okay. Come on, treats. <laughs> they are mine. All right, all right, we get on the ship. Yes. All right, you, you board back up, you go up the small rope ladder and get back on the ship. And uh, out on the deck, he's put a little table, these tiny little gnomish chairs for you to perch down on. Like these might break. <laughs> Kilgar comes back on, throws his axe out. Hey, hey, so what we got then? Zanlin, what you made for us? Yeah. Well, um, take the cover off the pot there. Oh, yes, churros. <laughs> I made churros for you. Thanks, Zanlin. They are mine. Uh, can, we, can we eat? Yes, you must eat them now. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Zanlin. <laughs> Okay, I'd like somebody to go ahead and roll for the weather today, so I'd like you to roll, please, a, actually a d20 to begin with, this will be the temperature today. Uh, three. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of getting on into sort of mid-spring at the moment for this part of Aeon. Very temperate climbs all around here. You're here now, just just past the kind of the first 50 miles into LNF, this vast sprawling forest kingdom. 
and um, the temperature is temperate. It is normal for the season. So there is a sometimes when the breeze picks up, there's a slight chill, but it is but an echo. It is but a memory of the winter that's now long past. Um, can you go ahead and roll for the winds, please? D20, Charlotte. Uh, Donna. Um, three. Three. There's no wind. You're surrounded by well, three, one. quite a dense forest. Any breeze that might exist above the canopy hasn't come down to ground level. Okay. And uh, Ellen, could you roll me another D20? Yes. Two. And there is, it's dry. Right. So it's a very still, cool spring day. <clears throat> it is just past the middle of the day, so we're getting into the early afternoon now. Um, I would like somebody to go ahead and roll D12 for me, please. Rochelle. One. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> The ship can't take anyone back from. Okay. All right, you're back on board the ship. Mm -hmm. The ship is yours, the day is yours, your, the people around you are there to interact with you. And uh, you have churros on the go <laughs> for as much as you want. Don't eat them so much that you can't talk. That's <laughs> hey, <laughs> Ellen. Would like you like to do? Could you, um, we were, we, um, you want to train? Yeah. Uh, yes, we can. Um, right. Okay, let's go to the back and we'll sit down. Okie dokie. I go over and we are going to, I'm going to teach her some more stuff. Train All right. So, intelligence check for you. Arcana check for you, please. <laughs> Getting harder as every day goes by. What? Uh, that's a 15. Okay. Um, all right, intelligence. Straight intelligence. 17. 17. Okay. Um, okay, so you spend, you have to spend four hours on this, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just solid study, so you go to your thing. Um, whether it's because you took quite a lot of damage during that battle or not, you find that it's hard work for you. <laughs> like, literally, you come straight from fighting to, like, trying to get into the headspace of passing on information to your friend. Um, so it's not easy, but you do manage to share some quite important concepts on the nature of evocation and that many, many magic users confuse conjuration for evocation, that when we're evoking fire, when we're bringing it forward and when we're bringing the elements to play, thunder, lightning, cold, fire, force, when we're bringing these, these powers to play, the, the, the rookie mistake is to think that you're bringing it from another place like you would with conjuration. And this is something that you've had trouble with. Um, the, what magic you do use has been enchantment, illusion type, where you are creating something from nothing. Evocation is a subtle nuance on that in your understanding that so far you haven't been able to get. Like where is it? Where am I bringing this from? And over the course of the four hours, it takes you a bit, and a few times where you have to take a break and actually just ask for a break, get up, walk around, stretch, have a bit of water, you sit down. And it's like when somebody incredibly intelligent is trying to explain something basic. Sometimes they can get impatient. So there's a few moments where that happens, but at the end of this, you get the next level of your magical unlocking comes to you. Uh, and you're able to sit there with this, just this plume of fire coming from your hand, and you're able to maintain it for a minute, two minutes, three minutes, and it's not an illusion, and you haven't conjured it. You have evoked it from the very magical essence around you into your hand, and you're able to banish it and bring it back. Whoa, I think I'm getting better at this. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to... I don't know, throw it. <laughs> that's a good word now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a really good point, actually, is then is like how do you control this thing that you have evoked into existence around you? Um, so, yeah, success. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any other? Okay, so when you finish your training, it is 
early evening. Um, it is a few hours from dusk, but because you are, because the ship kind of bumps along as the stream bubbles, as the river, excuse me, bubbles and broils and goes over rocks, so too does the ship adjust. <coughs> there's a few times where there's a few quite heavy bangs. Well, um, because the canopy of trees overhead. After you've done the training, where do you want to hang out? Um, uh, is Kilgar out on deck? As ever. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go out to where he is. I was going to go out there too. Okay, you all go out. Nimblefoot and Kilgar are just out um, smoking pipes <laughs> and just talking about stuff. As you go out on deck, you've noticed a distinct change in the nature of the forest. To date, in all of your adventures, forests, with the exception of when you went to the Fae, forests have been forests. Trees, anything from 30 feet to 70, 80 feet. You know, topsoil, grasses. You've been very used to that. Trees are like trees well, in our world, right? Trees have been very familiar to you in the way that forests behave and look seem the same. As you come out on deck, what you see around you is different now. The trees, the shapes of them, the winding nature of them and their size and scale and the colours that you see are wildly different from anything you've seen outside of the Fae. You notice as you go down that the, the river winds much more now through elaborate root systems that almost reach like drinking, like malleable drinking straws into the, into the water around you. Leaves flutter down here and there in a multitude of colours. Verdant, rich greens. The trees are much broader, much higher in places. But you are coming into a different kind of forest than you've ever experienced before. Around you, buzz and flit, dragonflies, some bigger than any you've ever seen, one, two, three feet across, and then hover and then flit off. Now, here and there, you see purple, pink, coral colored butterflies flutter languidly, lazily past the ship. As the ship soundlessly, remember, because the engine's almost completely bust, just <laughs> continues to just and just float down the, the, the river. You can see that as you go on, as you go, as you look ahead to where the river goes through, the, ca the canopy extends over the river now. There isn't space up to the sky. The canopy like comes in. Yeah, it's like a giant, massive oh. oval tunnel like this over the top of you. Branches reach like hands, long, gnarly hands, supporting huge canopies, nests, birds flitter. Nature is everywhere around you. The sounds, the smells are richer, more colourful everywhere that you see. Blossoms, it being spring, blossoms seem to float and gently drift around your field of vision as you come up on, on deck. Nimblefoot's just there, sitting back on a, on a stool, looking around, enjoying this wonderful, sylvan environment. Kilgar's just there, you know, looking at it all. Whoa. All right, you do. Hey, it's so much of change. Yeah, it feels different. But in the, uh, this is the, the elves' type place now. Yeah, it's beautiful. You want to smoke? No, no, no I'm good. I don't Thank smoke. you. Come join us or something. Yeah, I'll just sit down. Yeah, I'll just. All right, you take a seat, pull up a couple of the stools. So, I wanted to ask you guys. I mean, I don't mean to ruin this lovely atmosphere with talk like this, but. Hey. Um, do either of you know anything about the creation or discovery of Eurishnik? Um, we, we found out that it had something to do with the dwarves and the elves. I'm not sure if you knew anything about that history. I mean, 
I've been getting all my memories back. Maybe I haven't been hit enough. Hit? Maybe I haven't been hit enough. Uh, Three years sleeping underground. Yeah. Just cleverer. I can remember everything I was told. So do you remember anything about it? Aye, aye. I mean, I don't, I can't even say that word, the uh, Yeshnik thing. You're, you're Russian. I do remember. There was talk of something, you know, by my kin, miles away. But, uh, that uh, something awoke. Like they woke something and elves, the dwarves, they all worked together. It spread. They all worked together. It was when elves and dwarves got on, you know. How did it wake up? Why? No, we don't know. Something woke. What? I don't know. <laughs> Does anyone know? I mean, can you re not remember? Or is it like an actual... I'm movie? not old enough, lass. A thousand years before I was born. Do you know anyone that should know anyone that could have been alive? Ah, uh, well, since we're headed to Eliador, I, uh, I've not been here myself, but my uncle's son, my cousin, my first cousin, he was here. Older than me he was, but he was here. As two queens sit on the throne here. Throne, if you can call it that. Not really like that. But I remember, I remember him saying to me sometime that they were big lasses for, uh, for wood elves. I remember him saying that. He said they, they had legs that dwarves would be proud of. Anyway, he said all sorts of inappropriate things. <laughs> with love, with cousin. But uh, two queens... And they're old. But I don't know whether they'll speak to outsiders like us. Well, I don't know. Maybe need some of your silver tongue for that. <laughs> maybe, maybe so. Yeah. I mean, we can we can try to talk to them. Aye, aye. But you, you, need, you need to speak to old people who actually remember that. <laughs> the old people. There are not many people... Alive now, who were alive then? Well, surely there's some record of it, right? Or is that? And that way we're going, going up north. Yeah. Wasn't Eldo old enough? Nay, nay, nearly. Oh. Not quite. <laughs> anyway, it's not we need people. someone like. Oh, it's a brilliant memory. Like more than a thousand and a half. How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I don't mind. <laughs> How old are you? I am 378. That's how old, but nowhere near old. No, last no. I'd ha you'd have to ask my father's 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 father. And he's long ashes. And he wasn't around with different, hey, Nim, give us your map. <laughs> Brent gets the map out. He goes, you see, he lays it down. He says, this hair. Where we're going ultimately, right, to figure out what the hell's that. This here, see, I get all these memories now. <laughs> this was a big dwarven kingdom. One of them, one of the biggest, one of the richest in mining. I'm from over here. I'm from Rockholm, lass. I hail from here. These are our cousins. They're our kin. So but we wouldn't, we wouldn't see each other in a lifetime. And what I can only assume that that kingdom was destroyed. Looks pretty destroyed <laughs> yeah, to me. Yeah, but yeah, so it, it, that seems to be like the center point. We need old enough people. <laughs> the elves here would know there'd be some, but nobody knows what's going on here. It's all a bit odd. <laughs> what? what? It, well, in the crayon, that used to be mighty. You've seen it from afar, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, something's gone wrong there. That's that's what I was told as a boy. It's gone wrong. The Holic is from a crayon, I believe, or he he worked there for some. See, not all elves are the same. 
Your boy here will tell you, but like, there's different kind of hills. Do you want to hear about them? Sure. Uh, you need to know your history. And since you give me this uh, this bit of cloth here, look, boy, actually, my memories are clearer. Doesn't it look like a crown? No, he's just wearing it like a like a headband, like just oh. a white tied headband cloth that just hangs down uh, with a gem here, you know. Uh, so, remind me name. <laughs> Silvanari, Estenari, Solinari, Valinari, Falinari, Eldenari, right? Perfectly remember. Wait, wait, wait. That's wait. right. So, look. <laughs> I didn't quite catch all that. You have to realise, you have to realise, I was taught this, there was a little rhyme when I was a boy. The silver and the yes, the nari, 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 the nari. maybe we should take it. Anyway, I'll tell you. We're in the kingdom of the silver nari here. This is the wood elves. They're the most innocent. Like your little boy here. Knocks him, knocks him off the stool. <laughs> ah, ah. He goes, he's got some of that blood in him. Mischievous types. Uh, playful. I pixie. Yeah, I don't tell him that though. <laughs> Nemi, you like a pixie. Uh, no more than you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My father had a little bit of pixie. Oh. <laughs> um, now the Estenari. As, uh, your boy here yeah, has got that in his blood strong. His ma, your ma was, you know, if it goes a bit serious, he goes, the Estenari are the, the wild ones. Don't talk much. Don't live in trees, none of that. The Solinari. The Solinari are the high elves. Elves of the sun. Beautiful to look at. Not many of them here on Aeon. You can find them, oftentimes. Didn't you say you'd uh, you'd adventured with a, another lass a while back? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, uh, yes. Sorceress lass. Donna, Donna, yeah. High elf, you know, tall, yeah. blonde or red, all this kind of thing. A uh, little bit distant, can be a little bit dreamy. <clears throat> then you've got the Valinari. The moon, the moon elves, they're the grey, light skin. There, if you ever see them smile. I think their skin's so perfect because if they move and smile, it'll crack or something. <laughs> you can't have a drink with them, I tell you. Dead serious. Have you tried? <laughs> Aye, you see them around now. They're the Valinari, the grey. <clears throat> And you've got the Falinari, the Fallen Elves, the Dark Elves. Black skin, hair like snow from living underground for so long. Sometimes when we'd mine, we'd come across some of them. Didn't like sharing the territory much. Live far underground, the business is there. They don't like it up here, don't like the sun. Don't like daytime. If you meet some of them, be careful. There's some all right ones, but generally a bit mean. I think, anyway. Maybe they think that of me as well. I don't know. Then there's the elves of the crayon, the Eldenari, the first elves, the old, they're called. They're like aliens. They're not like us. They don't think and feel the same as the rest of us. Some say it's because they're so old, they've forgotten how to feel. I remember my, my past telling me that. Who's Dahalik, Eldenari? Who's Dahalik? Dahalik. Hey, who's that? Oh! Nimmerford says to him, he says, oh, Luther, yeah. Luther was him beforehand. <laughs> hey, uh, Squidhead! He's not an elf. He was not an elf. <laughs> he was an elf before. Well, before the squid got in his face. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was an elf and then a squid kind of like sat Oh, up. that's not no, true. He got things, something in his brain. Oh, poor fella. <laughs> well, he was a um, very powerful undead first. Right. 
I'm that first. No, 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 he was an elf first. Squid. Then he was a squid. And then that squid. <laughs> yeah. What a life is that? <laughs> was he from here? Was well, he from the I ground? I assume so, because when we, you did your magics, he, he, he's... Uh, well, if I said he's from there, he's from there. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. And well, he's, he's an old one then. He would have been an old elf. He's, um... Wasn't he responsible for the rift in some way? I said that. Whenever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his phylactery was in a crayon. It was the the yeah, ranching. And then you wished it weren't. Yeah. Uh, the ranching. Nine. Then you disturbed that and then come back and woke me up. Well, yeah. We didn't go there. We kind of just. Uh, she cast. You wished it? We yeah. found this ring. Ah. So, look. All I'm saying is, the elves from here, they're the fast elves. They're old. They don't like strangers. Nobody knows if there's any that's still there. Something went wrong. But you got to find the oldest people on the on Aeon are the elves. Of all the, of all the races, they live the longest. So you've got to find some old enough to know what the hell's going on. Either that or find some... Find some other people who are just old for whatever reason, <laughs> right? Like they might be like magic or something. Yeah. I don't know. You know that better than me. This is just stories I'm remembering from when I was a kid. Don't forget. I don't know. They might be make believe for all I know. Could be bullshit. <laughs> well, let's hope not. But it could be. Yeah. You know. Well, there's no way we can really know until we get to Nevermount. So you want to find the old people and ask them what? Yes. What happened with the? How was what? What woke, woke up? up? And what? Where did Ran, Where did Irishnu come from? And who, what are we trying to do? What are you about? What woke up or stop this? Uh, what uh, stop artifact? everything? Just yeah. stop. It might be connected. Right. Did you not? Know, you told me you found out something from your old grandpa or something when he died. Well, he said. He that. said something. Said the original was there. I Did mean, he say what I said? Which, which bit? What? Like what do you, what do you what? say? He said. Um, You'd make notes of this stuff, gun. That little wee <laughs> pad you got. <laughs> you carry around notebook for notes. Oh, I can't remember everything. That's I'm, good. No, that's good. I, I should start doing that. No, I mean you're good at remembering stuff. Emma says he absolutely should. <laughs> you old bearded fart. Uh, Look. This is why I kept this. Oh yeah. So when we're when we're visiting places, we can see uh, what's going on. You know. Yeah. Yes. You I mean, should try that. Bam! You try to. It's always beating each other up. Natural twenty <laughs> knocks Kilgar off his stool. <laughs> well, um, oh, this other managed to strike me. This is the legend that we did. Um, can't strike with fish. Yeah. Well, just, I think you wrote down what he said from the world many words somewhere else's book. Did you write down what he said on um one is in his death sending? Nope. I didn't have shoot. Well Make a intelligence check, just general yes. intelligence check. Yes, twenty two. Okay, so I'll tell you what you recall, and I'll say it for you one more time. So if you forget it, again, you forget it, right? Okay. What you recall from Eldor's death setting was <clears throat> the, um, I just need to get a name to remind myself what it's called. Mm -hmm. The Dwarves of Taraon. you spell that? T A R E A E O N, Taraon. The dwarves of Taraon woke, dug too deep, and woke something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They worked together with the elves to create an artifact that would somehow uh, 
Well, that, that's the, kind really. of the best of it. We'll kind of try to stop it, you know, or, 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 or keep it asleep, keep it. And it didn't work. Right? Something, or, or something went wrong. You're not sure what, but something went wrong. That's all you know. So when you speak to, to, to some old dwarves. <laughs> okay. Right. And when we said can Russia be destroyed, it said maybe. So that's like not very reassuring. Well, it's better than a no. <laughs> Let's just drop it through the world, many worlds. I <laughs> can't just kill a whole other world. Drop it into my little prune. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, no! Rainbow Bright is no, here, no, and then no, just no, this no, artifact no. of the being people that comes into my little puppy into a question. They would die. They would die instantly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they'd use their friendship as magic. The, anim <laughs> the animators would have to really... <laughs> they get all gruesome yeah. and the friendship of magic couldn't stop them. No. <laughs> Stopping the magic of friendship. <clears throat> okay, well... I'd say because you're under the canopy of trees now, the lights around you, uh, fireflies and bugs and stuff like that are starting to... You're starting to see the little lights of bugs and stuff around it's beautiful and some of the um the pollens that are in the air are kind of just catching some of the rays of the coral setting sun that just managed to peek through the branches so you see streams of lights and things like that coming through there is a general mistiness in the air because of the, the pollens and the slight uh, water vapor um it's very peaceful. It's really nice. Um, you continue. Is there anything else you want to interact around? Um, <clears throat> I'll go talk to Zalin. Okay, cool. He's in the in the main captain's uh, cabin. Hey, Zalin. Hello. Hello. Once we get to where we're going, how long do you think it'll take to fix the room? I don't know what elves have to fix this. Uh, I know we have. Uh, have you got the map? Yeah, uh, I'll just bring it. you have... Oh, that's it. Bring the hand to me. <laughs> you know, we know Everdale is big city, has everything. Yeah. More than Metropole. Big city, have lots. Never been to Metropole. No, I don't mean Metropole. I mean your granddad city. Char. Oh, no. Big city, uh, Everdale, but different oh. city. More like, more like Metropole, but it have lots of things. We get ceramics and brass fix How things. will we get from LMF to... I don't know. <laughs> maybe don't. Maybe well could not take us far. It was. It was sort of. It was sort of test flight. <laughs> yes, we know. At least you know it. I'd be honest. Are you in there as well? <laughs> okay. I'd be honest. I did not think he'd get us this <laughs> far. <laughs> what? It's brilliant. It's like boat as well. I did not know he would do this. <laughs> Sandra, were you prepared at all? Yes, I bring all my packs and everything for walking. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't expect it to go far? I didn't think so. So you brought all your stuff so you can walk? Yes. No, I didn't. You seemed so, uh, you seemed so um, like you wanted to go on it to get quickly everywhere. I wanted to make sure we wouldn't break down. You, you just like, you were like... Well, we're well, like, still moving. Really? But it's easy. There's holes in the walls. <laughs> yes, but look, we... The engine doesn't work! But that was from Crash and Big Bird. <laughs> no, no, but randomly if the spaceship begins... Where would you be if you'd walked? Spaceship. Where would you be if you'd walked? You'd be somewhere in the in the plains here, going, Oh, we lost, we lost. Why did you... Why is that my voice, son? This is your voice. <laughs> oh, we lost. Let's just turn back, go back to Curse, turn and have tea. <laughs> That's what oh, you'd be doing. No, didn't. You didn't want to walk very far. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs, he's just teasing you. He goes, I'm only joking. Um, it is my joke. I think we need a plan in case this world doesn't work. Because we can't He walk. pulls off a boat, a boot, <laughs> and puts up his little waggly toes. He goes, this plan. 
plan. Oh, we, we walk. That'll take too long. No. No? Can no. we travel for a little bit? What is time that we have? Um. It's so, okay, okay. We might not be able to stay within the time frame of these people, of the um, the shard of your Shnik expand. But we can at least try and get. But them. you say that you can easily walk away from it. We could walk faster than the. Yeah, ship but they're on an boat. island. They don't have boats. Yes. But what I'm saying is that we might not be able to be in that time frame, but we can at least try because there are people there. There might be boats there. They did not have boats when we went. When people live on islands, they usually have boats. <laughs> yeah, but they're all back at the city, and they're like at the beach with no civilization. They literally just went. They leave their boats behind. Yeah. That is silly. They can't carry boats across an island. You put boats on head and walk. <laughs> it's like it's like Minecraft boat. You hit it with <laughs> sword, pick it up. What? What's <laughs> now I'm being mean, silly. I saw again. Um, <laughs> um the. Uh, but the, you say people, it reach Forest Town, but then they can still go many miles to beach. Yes. Then sometimes you maybe just have to trust people will do the best. Yeah, I do. But you tell me too, that it's not just Ireland, that here in Aeon, everything is going black and horrible. Yes. And we are trying to stop that. Yeah, so that's why I have to be quick. But why but why is there a deadline? Because people will die. But who will die? So we know <laughs> but who will die? it's marked on map. There is no town. We, I mean dwarves up here might be in trouble. Yeah. But Look, I'm just I'm not saying we have to be super quick, but I don't want to be like really like long as well because the sooner we get this. Because we don't know what we have to, what we'll have to do after we get to Nevermind. I don't know whether, listen, this that you are in is very old, from the fourth time of people like you, Poxy, <laughs> and you, Poxy. <laughs> these ships were made in thousands of years ago. So, lots of people may not have bits. Uh, I don't know whether elves at Eliador. They have wood and leaves. Where do you get your stuff from to build this? We are gnomes. I had the book. Where did you get the things from? We mine it. So? We make ceramics from, from clay. You keep refining it and clean it until you have beautiful ceramics and brass fixtures. We don't need to build it from scratch, so we just need to repair it. The engine bits were hard because they are magical enchanted, but we have we have wizards, my own magic, we can put into things and Yeah, we already have all the stuff, we just need to fix it. <laughs> you say it like it's so easy. I, I don't fix them. It took us three <laughs> three years to make this, with all uh, all gnomes of Clementil working on it. Something, didn't you mention that uh, Luther's lair was a crashed point? Yes. Couldn't we have just taken that if it's a word? You need lots of people to fly a big Nautilus. A what now? Nautilus. Nautilus. Oh, one of those animal things. No, big ship. The mind flare ships. Yeah. Need lots of people to drive. Mm -hmm. Also, it is in mountain. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get it out? Also, it's in <laughs> just fly it up and it'll lift the mountain up. I don't no, think that's how it works, my boy. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about your intelligence. <laughs> I'm just joking. I know, I know you don't. It is my job. Now, um... It is my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can't have horses. <clears throat> In forest. <laughs> Wild horses. Look, I don't have my steeds anymore, so it would literally just be on foot if we can't use it. can just go and grab pine. Well, we maybe just have to do best we can. If that means walk, we walk. If it means we swim, we swim. If it means we fly, we fly. Boy here have carpet. Boy. We all sit on carpet and go really slow. <laughs> really slow. <laughs> it's a final time we each other's 
I sit, I sit on edge. I sit on edge. <laughs> Me and Tanyan sit on edge. I sit on edge. I sit on edge. I hold the edge bit. <laughs> we attach a rope to the bottom of it and make a little rope that holds Come another look. platform. We, do, we put we put rope round Killian's feet <laughs> and we drag him along. <laughs> We get him drunk and just drag him along. So he's head bonking on no, ground. No, 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 we fly above, so we just fly Yeah, he just hang <laughs> and complain and drink. That sounds like him anyway. <laughs> See, it is, we will be okay. Okay. Let's just, we stay on this until we can't anymore. Yeah. I just have another cool, cool problem. <laughs> cool. What is this? Um, I don't have a weapon. Hmm. So, does anyone have any spare weapons? Nope. I mean, looking hull. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See what we have. We might have, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I will look. Has, uh, Nimblefoot always has blades on him, is he not? Yeah, but I should be sword and then he couldn't use it to fight. And I would just, like, have something that anyone use. I could make sword from ceramics. <laughs> Ceramic sword. No, very strong. Oh, just brain. No, super sharp. No mish, no mish tools use ceramic tools. Really? Yes. Well, as if a beautiful pearly white sword looks like inside of shell, but is stronger and sharper. I've never seen a ceramic. All sword. right, tough crowd. I heard. I was <laughs> saying no. Maybe. I'll look in the hall. Now, is it, the moment is past. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I'm going to go look in the hall. Okay, you go down and look in the hall. All right, give me an investigation check when you get down there. <laughs> <clears throat> um, uh, 20, 29. 29? <laughs> um, I mean, 30. 30. Okay, amazing. Yeah, just 30. It doesn't take you long to find a rat. Uh, like a quilted wrap um, with a bundle of what for a gnome would be like a great sword, but for you are just like sh slightly longer than short swords. There's, you could use two of them if you'd like to, or you could take one of them. But Do you... I, am I proficient? Can I use two swords at the same time? No, I'd say you could use one short sword uh, fine and, be, and have your proficiency bonus. I don't like short swords. What's the damage on it? D6. Ugh. No. It's better than nothing to go to, don't just go, ugh. Um, is that all I find? You, uh, did you go with her? Where are you? No, I'm staying up on the outside. You're on the outside. Okay, great. Well, you make that decision <laughs> about weapons, and as night is falling in the in the forest, <clears throat> you're out, Nimblefoot and Kilgar are trying to uh, peer pressure you into smoking some of their, <laughs> their pipe for heat. <laughs> Nimblefoot's like, you're a wizard. How can you not fulfill the spirit stereotype? A wizard needs a pipe, and then we've got to grow you a beard, and it'll be brilliant. No thanks. What would happen if you grew a long beard, and everyone thought you were old, and then you wear a big hat, and then when you look at them, they're like, oh, my God, you're so young. That sounds like a good idea. He said, like, hang on, hang on. He takes off, he takes off uh, or he takes his hat off. He puts on oh. your head and he says, like, make it look like a wizard hat. You, you take it and it zoom, you, you have a long oh, thing like this. Oh, it comes oh, out like this, you know, Gandalf type yeah. of hat. He's like, oh my god, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Because it's a hat of disguise. Just put a put a beard on as well. <laughs> like you huge... <laughs> Kill the guy's like, oh, that's so funny! You look like a proper wizard now, boy. <laughs> now, just you need us paint as well, quick. Just a quick paint. <laughs> Successfully did for a uh, Make a constitution saving throw <laughs> with Kilgar's pipe weed. That's a, oh gosh, that's a that's an eight. Okay, <laughs> no. you, you are in, you are incapacitated for a round You're as high. you choke. <laughs> 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 he just laughs. He takes the pipe back. Get the channel. <laughs> <laughs> you revert back to her. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's just laughing. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> just, one day you'll be like that uh, white bearded wizard. Love it. Possible. Possible. <clears throat> um, I'd like Finley for you to go ahead and roll d6, please. Okay. Six. 
Six. Okay. As you're all laughing, <coughs> so you're all just in peals of laughs on the deck of the thing, and then suddenly <coughs> into Nimblefoot's shoulder, a big, thick, like crossbow quarrel lands. Oh, like that. Instantly sort of rips it out. Ah, oh, takes some damage. Oh, I'm in the hole. I'm always in the hole. I'm like, big time, and I can't climb up the stupid ladder. I'm like, <laughs> One more second. Um, How did you get surprised, Nimblefoot? How did that happen? Uh, you don't have time to kind of chat I'm away. Nimblefoot, <laughs> <laughs> how did you let yeah. that Hang happen? on, stop everything. <laughs> you, how did that happen? How did you have uh, a That's a natural 20 to hit you. Oh, man. Just okay, you take 10 points of piercing damage. Remember your current, you didn't heal after the fight, so you'll remember your current hit points. As a, oh, a crossbow bolt sinks into your midsection here. Your shirt and your, your robe take the most of it, but it, it hurts. Like I'm going to get appendicitis. And one, one uh, uh, hits Kilgar as well, actually. <laughs> One point of damage. He's he's all right. <clears throat> all right. Um, I'd like you. That's all that happens. So crossbow bolts fire, and a few, by the way, clatter into the into the uh, the Ooh. cabin as well. What well, having... so goes. What was this? <laughs> it's nothing. We were just um, yeah. Okay. What do you want to do? <laughs> Uh, Ufa's going to do a perception uh, check, which he just did terribly. <laughs> uh, that's an 11 perception. Ufa starts looking around and can't see, uh, can't see much. Oh, mind you, my passive wisdom is 24. So uh, Ufa just get, gets to the deck floor and goes up to the side where one of the big baluster is and gets his back against there while he's sort of patching up the wound. It's just wrapping some bandage around like this, and he just goes uh, in the trees all around. We're being we're gonna be ambushed. Okay. Kilgar's just standing up as they're whizzing past. He's like, Why was that? That was like a mosquito. <laughs> I could take more of that. <laughs> With that, another one kind of like hits him, but literally glances off and doesn't do anything. So he goes, Hey, great harder, right here. Okay, if you want to roll perception to see if you can I'm get what's going be. on, roll perception check. Oh, God. Uh, that's a 20. Uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-two, nice. Uh, yeah, you see, you look off into the forest, and even though it's getting darker, <clears throat> um, you, because you don't have dark vision, you just see some shadows, some deeper shades within the forest, multiple places kind of just moving like that. But there's definite movement in the in the forest here. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, hmm. uh, so you're not sure at the moment uh, what you can see because you haven't got dark vision and it's dark under the canopy now. I take dark vision with my glasses. Okay, you're gonna do that. They're gonna have another round to get there. I'm gonna take the deck. 13 to hit? Uh, hit the deck. <laughs> okay, great. Um, all right. Uh, what's your passive perception? Uh, my passive perception is, what is that 10 plus your wisdom? Yes. So 13. But you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm just like, hmm, oh, do I want this one? Oh, uh, this one. Oh, that one. This one seems to have a bit of a dent. No, it was dirty. <laughs> Okay, you're up on the, the ship. The ship's still about 30 feet around. Um, it's going to be time in a second. You don't know what's happening. No, I'm just like... It's going to be time to roll initiative in a little while. In a sec. Did you just clear some space? Yep. <clears throat> now, oh. for the sake of this map... This is a river? That's the river, not a road. Yeah. Got it? 
Alright. Come on, you have to move it out. Got it. So. <laughs> you, I like this pattern. This is that one you rolled earlier. Coming back. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to the pony you used So it happens when you roll a one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um... gravestone. Yeah, so you can that's that. This will be the boat, roughly. I'm going to put you about here. Okay. Yeah. So you're out on deck. So is nimble foot, and uh, we use use Mr. Bar and Arrow's kill guard. This is kill guard. Actually, we'll put up against the wall here. Yeah. Okay. Sandman's in here. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'd like everyone to go ahead and roll initiative, please. Even though you're not in combat, just roll it so that I know where to include right. you if you if you join sure. the fight. Oh, I don't. Fifteen. Why do you have advantage? Because I that's my click of I don't know what it is. It's my, it's oh my yeah, focus on your silent talent. Okay, so great. I got fifteen. I got fifteen. Okay. Who's got the higher dexterity out Me. of you two? Okay. Other one. Two. Yeah. What do you have? Fourteen. I got fourteen. Oh, well, I'll still get. Yeah, you can get. Kill girl's gonna be last to the one. <laughs> Middle person at the top. Zanlin. Yeah. And then your unnamed assailants. <laughs> oh, that's not good. No. Why your name <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> right, top of the round. Nimblefoot with his back against with half cover. Looks over the edge like this, looks around, just goes. Goblins. <laughs> Lots of them. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> I know. It was a like, goblin did 10 points of damage. I thought they were all smashed at the top. Like, I don't see goblins. That's a lot of goblins. It's two. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a lot of goblins. And it's the more let's go. <laughs> okay. battle music. We're still moving, right? Yes, 30, 30 feet. Mm. What goblins are there? This is just the, as many as you can currently see. This is a goblin <laughs> as well. Actually, that would be Talon then. Oh, Talon's going to die. <laughs> He's inside. I really don't want Talon to die. Oh, right. I loved her in his voice. Sounds like a weirdo. We're just throwing the hole. Yeah, we're just throwing the hole. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Nimble for on his go. Looks over the edge at the one closest to him. Is going to cast Nomadic Step. <clears throat> it's going to use there and back again. Burn two side points to go 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, and then I can use half my movement. So I can move 30. Uh, 25, 30, 35, 40. Here. So I literally. I just that. Okay. <laughs> Bamf off the boat. Nimble for just off the boat. And. Uh, 
is there, and I'm going to try and roll a bonus action hide, I believe that can do. See. I thought there and back again was bonus. No, that's my action. Let me just check that though, that's a good point. I think I can use my bonus action to you. As a bonus action, I can teleport up to 20 feet to an occupied space, you can see, and then move up to half my speed. And then at the end of my turn, I could teleport back to the boat, back to my spot if I want to. Uh, well, I'm going to use my action then to hide with my stealth modifier, which I do. So I'm now hidden and in the underground. That's the end of Nimblefoot's turn. Next up is the goblins. <laughs> okay, Finley, you have half cover. Just so you know. So it means well, you have half cover from any of the ones this side of the river. You don't have half cover from the, these this side just because of their vantage point. And many of them are in the trees. But you said you get up against the side like near where Nimblefoot is. So you've got like the edge of the boat behind you. But as you look out, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. You are going to get... Uh, this, this one is going to shoot you. And hang on, five, ten, 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 ten. This one is going to shoot you as well. Okay. You do have half cover. So uh, nine to hit. No. Thirteen to hit. No. Okay. A few bolts <laughs> go, go past you. You're fine. So these two goblins are going to go for kill guard. Natural twenty. Ten points of damage. If one just sticks into kill guard. He just like goes. <laughs> Not that concerned with 10 points of damage. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, this one here is going to shoot into the open cabin at Zanley. And misses. <laughs> Hang on, 13. No, it hits him. Excuse me. It hits him. Salmon takes a point of damage. Zanlin or Zanlin. 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 Oh, that's just this side of the river. This side of the river. <laughs> shoot. These two are going to shoot Tanlin. No! No! Tanlin! <laughs> and a natural 19. Throw him in hits. the hole. Throw him in the hole. Throw him in the hole. Okay, a few hit into tunnel. Oh, oh, what's it? The bloody goblins! Here, from out of the forest, on their go, some more are going to emerge. Now, because I don't have enough goblin figurines, I'm going to be using these. Each one of these is a goblin, okay? They're just going to emerge. That's a lot of colours. They're really going all out here. Okay. Uh, okay. It is now Eloin, your go. What would you like okay, to do? I'm going to. 